God, thank you for that truth, for that promise from your word that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, you will never fail us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. What amazes you? Like, what just blows your mind? You ever been amazed? I am the dad of three daughters, and that meant that I had to go to the camp out for fifth grade for my daughters, which was always awkward because I stayed in the guys' dorms even though I was a girl dad. And man, by the time I got to my last daughter, who is your age, she's a freshman in college, I was tired of fifth graders. I was annoyed by fifth grade boys. And I got into a cabin with fifth grade boys. And there was this kid He had Star Wars stuff on. He wore it. He was obsessed with Star Wars. Star Wars, everything. Some of you are like that. You have a Star Wars sleeping bag. You have Star Wars shirt, Star Wars, everything. He watched Star Wars on his iPad. He watched Star Wars every chance he could get. And so we were on this hike, and they said to everyone, no electronics. Put your phones away. Put your iPad away. And I'm thinking, this kid, he's not going to do well on this hike. We go up and we get to the top of this mountain and we're looking down. And it's beautiful. I mean, you can see for miles. It's an incredible sight. And I looked at this kid and I said, I mean, I thought maybe I saw a tear in his eye. I said, hey, this is a pretty awesome view, isn't it? And he's like... No, the forest moon of Endor is so much better. And I'm like, that's not even real, man. That's like where the Ewoks live. Like, this dude has so much of the super normal in his life that he could not appreciate the real thing. What amazes you? Are you like that? Are you like, man, there's just nothing that impresses me any more. Well, I have been amazed. I have st- stood at the crossroads of Brazil and Argentina, and I stared wide-eyed in wonder at the forceful following of Iguazu Falls. Beautiful, amazing, spray and mist splashing through the rainbow reflections of light in pure and vibrant colors. I stepped off a 200-year-old monstrous Saibo tree in the Costa Rican rainforest, descended on a zip line through the valleys with colorful macaws and parrots actually flying all around me in the jungle and monkeys swinging from the trees. It was amazing. I walked the history-laden streets of London, watched the Royal King's Guard as they moved their horses, the Irish draft horse and the black Friesen horse into perfect step and perfect rhythm. It was amazing. I remember sitting behind the third baseline in the World Series in 1985, watching George Brett, who in an unbiased opinion, was the purest, had the purest swing in the history of the major leagues. And he gave the Cardinals a clinic in 1985 on how to swing the bat as they won the World Series in a comeback. Have you been amazed? I have. Watching my wife walk down the aisle 28 years ago, actually saying, I do, actually having hair amazing being the father of three incredible strong willed daughters who are all leaders in their own right amazing I have been amazed and never have I not been amazed when I comprehend when I experience the thin places on this earth where God is When I experience God, I'm amazed. I can't explain God very well to you. 
You just have to experience God for yourself. And when you do, a person can only stop in awe when they recognize God's kingdom come in this world. Because it's amazing that God would even break into our world and into our own lives. It's amazing that he even cares for us. When is the last time you've been amazed? Seriously. I mean, I hear it a lot. That's amazing. But yeah, I don't know if that video is amazing. Is it? Maybe you need in your life to come face to face with a God who is so holy, it's scary, but so loving that it changes you completely. So holy that it's scary, but so loving that it changes you. It transforms you from the inside out. When you realize that God is enough and you pray that you just have enough, not more than enough, just enough, and you're amazed that you found forgiveness and you can offer forgiveness to others. And you're amazed that God hears your prayers and you can be led far from temptation to just fall prey to the super normal in your life. See, Jesus taught these things to people over 2,000 years ago, over 7,000 miles from here. And when you think about it, I think it's crazy how relevant these teachings are to us today. In Matthew 6, Jesus says this. Listen up. I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear is not life more than food. The body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not, they do not sow or weep or store away in barn, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? We are a culture of worry and anxiety. And our worries are different from those people 2,000 years ago, 7,000 miles away. But they are worries nonetheless. And Jesus teaches us not to to worry about our lives. The birds, they aren't worrying. They're fine. And God takes care of the birds. Will not God take care of you? Does not God care for you and your life and all the complex situations that you find yourself in? Jesus continued, why do you worry about your clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They don't labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. I think what Jesus is trying to tell us to do today, I think what I'm trying to say to you today is relax. Depend on God. Trust in Him. Each of you were created with God's spaces in your life. Each of you were created with God's spaces in your life. And what you need is for God to fill those spaces. Stop trying to fill them with other things that promise to fill you, but don't. They always leave you longing for more. And you will realize that God, His love is strong. See, I think sometimes that this concept of God's kingdom is so abstract you can't even comprehend it. I like to talk about it in different ways. I like to ask this question, what is the vision that you have for your life? Like, What is the vision that you have for your life? And what is the vision that God has for his world? Now we're starting to talk about the kingdom. If you knew God would answer your prayer today, what would you pray for? Now, statistics tell us in a recent survey from Gen Z that the number one goal of Gen Z is to have a good job and make a lot of money. That's not a terrible goal. It's just not one that's going to fulfill you. 
It's interesting to me that it rises above good relationships or a relation, finding the love of your life. But all of those goals that we have in our life will fall short if it doesn't lead us into the vision that God has for our life. That might be different from the vision that we have for our own. And God wants us to see through his eyes that has his vision for the world. And Jesus wants them to advance his kingdom into the world through you. The kingdom of the heavens advance through us. In Matthew 13, 44, Jesus tells us, his disciples, that the kingdom of heaven is like buried treasure. And it's found by someone in seeing that it was so valuable, decided to buy the whole field. It was that important. God's way of doing things is just that valuable. It is the secret treasure that each of you are looking for. And you don't even know it sometimes because he is this great source of power, but he's filled with this unbelievable love. And it's amazing. In Psalm 62, 11, David writes, One thing God has spoken, and two things I have heard. Power belongs to you, God. And with you, Lord, is unfailing love. Some of you today feel powerless. You don't feel like anyone listens to you or sees you or knows you. Some of you feel trapped by circumstances that are beyond your control. Maybe some of you are addicted and no matter what you do, you can't beat it. You can't get victory. You can't get victory over these things. Maybe you, you can't stop comparing yourself to others. And for some reason, you just keep coming up short. Maybe you don't feel like you have much influence over others. But for all the power, all the poor and the powerless, there is a God who is all-powerful, omnipotent, strong. Some of you today don't feel loved. You've never been able to meet expectations. You want to be loved. You have lots of love to offer. But for whatever reason, it just hasn't worked out in your life. You haven't been able to find an opportunity. Some of you feel lonely anxious, longing for something real. For all of those who don't feel loved, there is a God who loves unconditionally. It's agape love. And it's deep because God's love is strong. Amen. Oh God, teach us to pray. You know, that's what the Lord's prayer is. Teach us to pray. Teach us to ask your kingdom come. You help us to see with your eyes. Help us to know your heart. I just imagine that there's someone here that's fed up with the temporary loves of this world that needs something that lasts, that's something that's real, something that will sustain them when life gets hard and you're faced with things that are uncertain. I think there's some of you who need today to just pray for God's forgiveness for some of the things that you have been involved with and know that as God forgives you, which is automatic as you ask, then you are challenged to go and forgive others. Maybe some of you need to let go of some grudges and let God just be ever present in your life. We're gonna close today by just spending time in worship and, and singing through this song again and praying. I want to invite anyone who wants to pray to come to the altar. The altar, it's not magic or anything. Like, it's just a place to pray. You, you kneel and pray. It may be a place where you say to others, hey, I'm publicly praying because I need you to know, hey, I am dealing with these things and I need you to pray with me. Maybe that's what you need to do. Maybe you just want to sit there and just soak it in and just hear these words again. Maybe you want to stand and worship. I don't know what God is doing in your heart, but I felt particularly led today to give someone the opportunity to pray for a new dose of God's power and his love in your life. 
and it would change everything for you. Absolutely. So God, be in this place right now. Move the way that you can move. You are strong and you love us. We are so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen.